Dr. Moore, can you give us an update on the current outbreak in our area? Yeah, good afternoon. So it's uh, July 5th, Sunday, July 5th at 2 o'clock. I'm just reviewing the COVID activity in our community. Uh, since the beginning of COVID activity, we've had 105 cases, 66 have resolved. We have 39 active cases in our community. So uh, our nurses are contacting these individuals on a daily basis, ensuring that they're well, ensuring that they're isolating from others. We have over 170 contacts of these individuals that we're also following up on a daily basis. Uh, I'm happy to say as, as of two o'clock this afternoon, we have no new cases. Um, we had 37 cases related to these nail sal salons. Uh, Bin's nails had 33 cases. Kingdom's nails had two cases. And George's nails had two cases. Um, we, as a reminder, uh, had asked everyone that had visited uh, at George George's and Bin's to isolate themselves for 14 days from the time of their appointment uh, and get tested if you develop symptoms. Certainly get tested uh, before you uh, return to work in any high-risk environment. And we've already had cases resolve uh, from, from this outbreak, which is great news. We peaked on the 25th of June with 10 cases, uh, and now we're coming down this uh, epidemic curve. Uh, this is good news for our community. It is not propagating, uh, and we've caught it in time. We must continue to remain vigilant, uh, and certainly we're working with all of our businesses as the economic reopening occurs to ensure all adhere to best practices. Uh, we have one person in hospital who's stable uh, and may be leaving the intensive care unit to a medical bed. We've had three cases of the 37 that have resolved, again, which is good news. And because we're doing so well in testing with um, over 5,000 tests done, um, we have uh, found others. So we have that one returning traveler from Europe. Uh, we have another traveler that went outside of KFLNA, who's come back symptomatic. Um, we have one uh, that we're actively investigating with another health unit to see if it's work-related exposure. Um, we have one other uh, active investigation that we don't have enough detail on to describe yet, uh, but the nurses are phoning as we speak. Uh, and uh, we have uh, one case who had significant contacts from uh, the greater Toronto area and we think that's their exposure. None of these individuals were very confident had gone to any of our workplaces uh, that we were concerned about. Uh, also have to say that uh, we've had no uh, further cases associated with Amherst View Golf and Country Club. Thank you to all those that got tested uh, who had been uh, to that facility on the three specific days that we'd mentioned, uh, June 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Uh, that uh, risk it will expire very soon as we count 14 days uh, from the time of that exposure, which is great for our community. It, as again, we said it was a low risk exposure, um, but thank you to all the members of our community that got tested. So we're on the right track. We all must remain vigilant, uh, monitor for signs and symptoms of COVID, get testing uh, if uh, you develop any signs or symptoms of COVID-19. Uh, as well as practice all the prevention strategies that we've been recommending. It's all about prevention, prevention, prevention. Uh, good hand hygiene, wearing a mask in public where you can't uh, maintain physical distancing of two meters, maintain uh, that trustable uh, social circle of less than 10 individuals, uh, and uh, we will do well. Um, uh, this is a clear example of how a community can work together uh, to reduce the risk, uh, but it takes everyone uh, doing their part. And thank you uh, to the community, to the individuals that are isolating, uh, to the contacts that are isolating, uh, and to all of the health system partners uh, that clearly have to work together um, for us to be able to control uh, this outbreak.